Okay, so let's talk about what is actually a static variable and how we can use it. So let's take for example that I have an enemy class and inside of it I have a static variable called health and it's going to be equal to 10. So for each new instance that I'm going to create, the health variable is going to be equal to 10 for each of them. And what it means to be a static variable is that if I try to change the health variable inside of one instance, then it's going to change it for all of the other instances and also for the enemy class. So I got two ways to change the health variable. And the first one is calling the class directly like this. We're going to call enemy, get the health variable and change the number. And what it's going to do is change for each of the instances of the enemy class. So instead of 10, it's going to be equal to 5 now. And the second option is getting one of the instances that we already have and change it from there. Both ways are going to give us the exact same result. So it doesn't really matter which one you choose. Okay, so now I want to talk about static functions and how we can use them. So let's tell for example again that we have a class name called enemy. And inside of it, we have a static function called update health. Now because it's a static function, we can only call static functions inside of it. And we can only change static variables. So we got two problems with it. We can't emit signals because the emit signal function is not a static function. So we can't call it. And because a static function works on the enemy class and it's not working on a certain instance, that means that we can't change any of the nodes for an instance of the enemy class. But the positive thing is that we can call it from anywhere in our game. So if you want to use it, we just need to call the enemy class and call the function itself. So for example, we're going to write enemy.updateHealth. Okay, so now that we talked about static functions and static variables, I'm going to show you how you can use it inside of your game. So let's create a new project. Okay, so I'm going to start with a new 3D scene. Inside of it, I'm going to have a camera and a directional light. So this is going to be just a regular scene. And next, what I'm going to do is create a new 3D scene. That is going to be the enemy unit. And inside of the node 3D, I'm going to have a mesh instance. You can choose whatever mesh you want. And I'm also going to create a label 3D. And also change the text to health with the current amount equal to zero. So now what I'm going to do is create a new script. And inside of it, I'm going to create a new class name called enemy. Create a new static variable called health that is going to be equal to 10. And inside of the ready function, I'm going to get the label 3D and change the text to health plus the string of the health. So let's go to the world scene. And inside of it, I'm going to add the enemy scene. So like that, I'm going to save it. And if I run it right now, we can see that the health is going to be equal to 10. So this is going to work just like a regular variable for now. And let's go back. And what I'm going to do now is create a new scene. I'm going to create a new node, change the name to enemy manager. And I'm going to add two buttons to it. So the first one is going to be the upgrade button. That's going to upgrade the health. And the second one is going to be the spawn enemy button. So you can place them wherever you want. And then what I'm going to do is create a new script for the enemy manager. And I'm going to connect the press signals inside of this script. So for both the upgrade button and the spawn enemy button, you're going to connect it to the enemy manager. And inside of the enemy manager, I'm going to get the ready function. And I'm going to get the enemy class, get the health variable, and I'm going to change it to 5. So right now, if I add the enemy manager to the world scene, I'm going to add it like this. So let's try to run the scene right now. Okay, so you will see that the health did not change. And that's because we need to move the enemy manager scene. Because it first needs to change the health and then change the label of the enemy 3D. So we need to put it up here before the enemy scene and run it again. And now it's going to be equal to 5. So what I want to do now is go to the enemy script. And inside of it, I'm going to create a new static function called upgrade health. And it's going to get the new health. And what I'm going to do is just add it to the current health. So right now we just need to call it. So what I'm going to do is go back to the ready function. And I'm going to get the enemy class and call the upgrade health. And I'm going to give it 10. So right now if you try to run it, then it's going to add 10 to the current health. And then change the label to the health. Okay, so now let's say that I want to click on the button. And it's going to upgrade the health. What I'm going to do is like I said before, I'm going to connect the press signals. And now after we connected the signals, what I'm going to do is first I'm going to delete the ready function. 
I'm going to create a new variable called enemy and it's going to be the scene of the enemy. So I'm going to write reload and I'm going to get the enemy scene and inside of the on spawn enemy pressed function, I'm going to write var enemy instance is going to be equal to enemy dot instantiate. And for the new enemy instance, I'm going to change the position to vector three with one on the X axis. And then I'm going to add it to the scene. So let's just see if it works. I'm going to run the scene. I'm going to click on the spawn enemy. And just to see it works, let's go back. Now on the on upgrade button pressed function, I'm going to write enemy that upgrade health, I'm going to give it 10. So like we did with the ready function. And now it's just going to work when I press the button. So let's try to see if it works. I'm first going to click on the upgrade health. As you will see, it's not going to work for the health of any instance that exists inside of the game. It only works on new instances that we are going to create. So if I try to click on the spawn enemy, then it's going to spawn it with the new health. And to fix that, what we are going to do is go back. And I just want to explain why it doesn't work. So what we are doing is actually calling the upgrade health function. So if we go back, what it's going to do is add the new health that we sent it. So the 10 and add it to the cones health. So instead of 10, it's going to be equal to 20, but we didn't change the label 3D text. So it's not going to show on any existing instance that we created. It's just going to work on new instances because now it's going to be equal to 20. And if I try to create a new enemy, then it's going to call the ready function and change it to the current health. So it's not going to work with existing instances. So to fix it, what we're going to do, we're going to create a new array. So what I'm going to write is static variable. Let's call it enemies. And it's going to be of type array. So like this. And it's going to get all of the current existing enemies. So we're going to start with an empty array. And for each new scene, we're going to get the enemies and add any new enemy to it. So I'm going to write inside of it self. So this array is going to get all of the current existing enemies that we have inside of the game. And then what I'm going to do is create another static function, which is going to be called update health for all. And what I'm going to do inside of it is create a for loop. So for each enemy inside of the enemies, what I'm going to do for each of them is call a function that is going to update the label 3D text. So what I'm going to do is create a regular function, which is going to be called update health. And what it's going to do is like the ready function, we're going to get the label 3D and change the text. So for each enemy, what I'm going to do is just call this function. So update health. And what it's going to do is run over all of the current existing enemies and call the update health function, which is going to set the text of the label 3D to health with the current updated health. So all we need to do now is just call it. So let's go back to the enemy manager. And what I'm first going to do is call the update health. And then we just need to update it for every existing instance that we have. So I'm going to call enemy and I'm going to call the update health for all. So let's see if it works. Let's run the game. And if I try to click on the upgrade health button, then it's going to update all of the existing enemies that we have inside of the game. And it's also going to change the health variable, the static variable that we created. So every new enemy that we are going to create is going to have the same health. So if I try to spawn the enemy, it's going to have the health change to 20. So this is just a simple example, but let's say that we have 100 enemies, then it's going to be much more noticeable. So I hope you enjoyed. If you like this kind of videos, please consider subscribing to the channel, like the video, and I'll see you all next time.